Hey guys, A. Seaton here, and today I'm going to be step by step on how to print, cut a decal using the Roland VG2 540. This will also apply to any of the older Rolands um, as long as you're using VersaWorks. So, again, we're going to be using today, I'm going to use Photoshop and Illustrator and VersaWorks, but you can use other software to get to the point. Um, but I'm going to kind of show you how we get this decal from the customer to the print and back to the customer, if that makes sense. So, change my screens here so we have a graphic here that the customer sent us um, some kind of speedway you know decal so first thing I'm gonna do is pull it into Photoshop and then what I can do now is I like to make a copy of everything so I just do control J on my keyboard and if you don't do that you can just grab the layer right here down to the bottom right and then there is a duplicate button right beside the trash can so now I like to do that just so I know, I know I don't mess anything up. Now we have a background, you know, it's solid white and we have a gray stroke, which is perfect for us. So I'm gonna hit W on my keyboard, which comes over here to the like magic wand, quick selection and stuff like that. So I'm gonna hit magic wand tool. My tolerance, I have it at 50%. We can just leave that there for now and I'm hit white. So I, so I just selected that white, it's all taken away now. I'm just holding shift down with my left hand and still clicking my right and all this white that wanted to go away. And now you just need to right click with your mouse and hit select inverse. And then over here in the bottom right, you can hit the mask button and bam, you got that took care of. So now we got all that white that we don't want in there out and we're just left with this gray stroke that was already there in the image, right? Sweet. So now we're gonna go into Illustrator and we're gonna build out our cut lines. So um, what I like to do actually myself is I like to get a stroke around the graphic. So in this case, it's a gray, um, it's a gray stroke. Let me, pull it up here. So I got that stroke right there, or that color, and I'm just gonna add a stroke by double clicking over there, and hit stroke, and you can see it just added a black one. I like to add an extra stroke for bleed for my cuts. That way I know that they're, um, you know, within that, I wouldn't have any mistakes there. You can also just do white. It really just depends on, you know, how you like to do things. Um, and then I'm going to pull up Pull on this other monitor and make sure we have the sizing right. Um, that way we can, you know, get it right right here. So they want like an inch and a half tall decal. So I'm gonna hit Control T on this and the height up here. I'm gonna change this to 1.5 inches. Stroke down. Actually, no, before I do that, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna convert this to a smart object and maybe um, maybe that will keep it from being destroyed so much. Um, and maybe let's we'll drop it down to two inches because this print is still gonna be you know pretty bad. Now let's make sure I'm going to make a new board right here, 300 DPI, just to double check and keep it from like tearing up, I guess you'd say, you know, from going to smaller. So now I changed my artboard over to a 300 DPI artboard. So you go to image, image size, so that's 300 on the resolution versus this one. If you go to image and image size, it says 72. That's gonna make it where you, you know, when you make it smaller or bigger, it's not gonna really help the quality. So now, you know, we pretty much got that. I'm gonna change it to two inches. There we go. So it's still not the best quality in the world, but it's better than what it was. Right. But again, I can right click over here and go to blending options. I'm just gonna make my stroke. 
not that big, but you get the point. I can change the color so you can see what I'm talking about. This is my bleed. I like to just have a little bit more, especially in these smaller cuts because they're such pristine cuts um, on the cutter. It's good to have these in there. So I like to do that. And then I'm just going to make it the color of the stroke around it. So it matches. There we go. So now we're ready to add the cut lines to this. So I already have Illustrator file already opened up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this and just bring it down into Illustrator. Bam. All I have to do is just center it. So we got our file here. Next is we have to add our cut lines. So what I do is I take the stroke off or you know, you right click and go to blending options. Um, so I do so many shortcuts that I'm trying to talk my way through it for y'all. So I turn my stroke off. What I do is I do a color overlay of black and this will make sense here in a minute. So then I grab this and pull it back into here, right? And over on my layers, I have, you know, on the Illustrator, I have this black layer. I'm gonna do Control X, and then I'm going to lock a layer, then add a new layer, and do Control V. That way I have just this. And then up here, I go to Image Trace, but you can go to Window, Image Trace, um, and it pops up over here. But I like to just do, um, I'll just hit image trace up here and then you go to your settings right here it says like again my boards are all over the place but hit ignore white and then you hit expand so that way you just knock that white out and you just left this black shape right so if you do center and center this should line up um, perfectly So now we have, you know, our cut line, you know, if that's where we want it, right? So I need to get the Roland VersaWorks cut line into here. So if you don't know where that's at and you have VersaWorks, put it in here. I'm remoted in my cut computer here. Um, you can go into your, like your local disk and go to your program files. And then there should be a folder that says, uh, VersaWorks or Roland. Let's see here. I might have went to the wrong one. Yeah, it might be this other one. VersaWorks. So over here inside your, you know, program files, we'll go to VersaWorks. Then you have um, swatches. And then, because I use Illustrator, I use the Illustrator swatches. And then here's all the swatches that you would need for Versa, um, for VersaWorks. Right, and then of course I have VersaWorks pulled up over here. But let me go back into my Illustrator. And I already loaded these up into my library. To do that, you just copy them from that and paste them into like Illustrator's library. If you need help, you know, just let me know and we can help you out with that. But, so I'm in my library and you see right here, I already have one of VersaWorks. I come down to Roland VersaWorks and I have these. These are like my cut lines. So pink, our magenta is your cut contour. So that is your standard cut. So if you're just wanting to cut a decal, you know, and have a cut line around it and, and peel it, that's that cut. And then the next one you're gonna worry about is the perf cut. So if you wanna cut through the material and kind of like um, push the decal out and let it fall out of the material, you can do that as well. And we can do that. And sometimes we do do that for smaller orders. That way it's a better presentation, so. First thing I'm gonna do is focus on the regular cut. Okay, so you have this. Now, well, you can go down to the bottom left and you're gonna uh, swap the fill and stroke around. So now you have a cut line around it. Up here in your stroke setting, you're gonna go change this to 0 0.25. Awesome. So now you have your cut lines and you can kind of see exactly where all the cuts are gonna go. Right, and we have this bleed on here just in case the machine, you know, um, moves around or whatever in any sort of way. I'm going to just make mine a little bit bigger. I'm going to affect path offset path. I'm only doing this because the, the decal is so small. I think I need a little bit thicker stroke on there so that it doesn't, um, move, you know, left or right in the machine or 
or some type of error that would cause me to do a reprint. So, as you can see now where I've got my cut line at, I've got a thick stroke. And then now we can add the cut contour. So, this is an optional thing. You don't have to do this on everything. So, what I do is I just copy my cut line. I'm going to go ahead and name that here. You know, cut. And then I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to add a new layer. And again, this next option is, is you know, optional. But I did what I did just then, I did a control F. That way it's going to place it back in place. Then I'm going to turn my cut line off right here in my layers. Um, and I did that so I could see this, right? So what I need now is my perf cut. So I'm going to go to um, object, I'm sorry, effect path offset path and I already have one applied so I can double click it right here I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and you might be like man why are you doing this well I'm doing this so that when I peel it out or it will it will just come right out of the material itself and I won't have to worry about the cut or anything like that or the presentation of it um, it'll just be ready to rock and roll and I can go to the client so remember we still have it as magenta so now we need to come up here to our roll inverse work swatch to the perf cut contour i click on that and again there's swap down here so we swap that out and turn off that magenta and it's hard to tell because of the nature of this graphic is already gray but there is a gray cut line right here and again make sure it's 0 0.25 so now i'm gonna turn my cut back on so you can see that we have our printed graphic, we have our regular cut line, and then we have a perf contour, our perf cut contour. Um, and you don't, you know, if you if you ever settings dialed in just right on your printer cutter, you don't need to have this extra cut line there. You know, you're supposedly you're supposed to be able to like just push them out. Um, I haven't got my blade set just right myself to do this yet. I just haven't messed with it, but. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, we just got to flatten the transparency and, and get it ready to go to cut. So let me go ahead and unlock these layers and we're going to do, we're gonna do control a on your keyboard. And if you don't do that, just highlight everything. The very top left, go to object, flatten and transparency, make sure it's on high resolution and press okay. Then you're gonna go to your artboard tool at the left hand side. So you're gonna click on it. At the very top left, there's a custom button or drop down. I want to do fit to artwork bounds. Bam. So this is our decals. So now we need to save it as an EPS or a, or a PDF. So let me um, save it in the client's folder. Hold over here. Um, there. Sorry, I'm gonna set this PDF. Print and cut. Awesome. And you can like, so you can save as a PDF or EPS. Um, VersaWorks will read either format. So once you have that ready to go, you just gonna pull into your VersaWorks. Again, I'm remoted into the computer, so let me pull it up over here. Um, go the way you can see it I'm just in a different room than the, the actual printer is so you can see we already have some jobs here but I'm gonna pull it in my Q5 I'm weird I like to put anything that cuts in Q5 anything that prints in QA um, that's just my preference it doesn't really matter so next thing I'm gonna do is we're just gonna pull in um, a graphic so let me, it's hard to do it with since I'm remoted in, but pull this over here. Um, there we go. So I'm just gonna pull in the client folder. You 
you see right there it says decal print and cut make sure you i like to name it that way that way i know exactly you know through my file system that's what it is but all right and then can i make this any bigger for y'all yeah full screen there we go okay so we're remoted into the, the print computer um and we're in verse works so right off the bat you'll notice a couple things now you have your over here on your like attributes or your properties of the the graphic um underneath page size you have special items so you have a solid square and a dash or dotted square so the solid one is your regular cut and the dash is your cut contour if you notice that um so which is pretty cool so it that means we know that the file is made right it understands that there is a print cut line and there is a cut contour um, perf cut line so um, next thing you can do you can double click on it and this this printer or computer is super slow but so I'm gonna zoom in and you see that there's you know two of these like dancing ants I guess you would say of dotted lines right so the next thing you want to do is you, you want to know you're gonna get your media width and then how many copies this client wanted 25 copies of this or 25 decals right and in, the, in this case I would just go ahead and you know I'd fill the line then I like to do center on the media just me then you go down to your, your print options right um, you know, with, with the VG2, we've been getting great resort, results out of the standard print. So I just leave it like that. I'm going to come down to my marks. This is really important, especially if you're doing a print cut lamb. Um, or a print lamb then cut, sorry. I'll put it where it says crop marks, print and cut alignment. You're going to click that. Got to have those. Got to have those. Leave it on the entire area. And then you're going to come down to this scissors or cut controls. And there you go. Um, now you says it says print and cut, cut and print, or print only and cut only. Because of what I'm doing in this case, I'm printing the graphic, then I'm gonna put it through my laminator, and then I'm gonna put it back into the to the VG2, the print cutter. So I'm gonna do print only, right? And then after that, when I get it out of the laminator and I put it into the printer again to cut, I'm gonna do cut only, and then I'm gonna adjust the settings here, right? So what I've learned, I need to be about between 165 and 175 on my cuts. So like, I'll probably do, you know, like 170-ish right here on my cut, and that way it'll cut the graphic and cut all the way through um, and so forth. So I'm gonna leave it at print only now, that way it's ready for me to print. Got my crop marks, um, I got how many I need, equal spacing, so we're good to go on that. So next, what I'll do is I'll go and start printing. So when I'm ready to print, I will grab the camera and we'll go to that and we'll show the print and the lamb, then cut again. We'll go from there.